Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. In this lesson, number 131, we'll take a look at the differences between microservices and event-driven architecture. You can find all of my lessons in a complete catalog of those lessons, as well as view those lessons through my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons, where you'll find Software Architecture Monday. Uh, most of my lessons take material from two books I've recently written with uh, my friend and colleague Neil Ford, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture and also Software Architecture, The Hard Parts. So I get a lot of questions, especially recently, about the differences between microservices and event-driven architecture. After all, aren't they the same? Well, let's take a look and answer that question. So when we talk about event-driven architecture, which is described in Chapter 14 of our book, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture, we see that EDA, or event-driven architecture, really is an architectural style that leverages, leverages asynchronous processing uh, to be able to trigger events and then correspondingly respond to those events. However, in chapter 17 of our book, we talk about microservices. Microservices architecture is an architecture style that supports this concept of single purpose functions deployed as separate units of software, each owning its own data. Requests come into an API layer. That API layer, which is usually uh, some sort of gateway, uh, fronts separately deployed single-purpose services, all owning their data. So when we take a look at these two architecture styles, we can certainly see event-driven architecture here, but what if I were to use microservices in place of those event processors? Then isn't this really microservices? Or correspondingly, let's say that we have a microservices architecture style, and service A triggers an event, which is responded to by B and C. C in turn, or B, I should say, then triggers an event, which is responded to by D, and then correspondingly, D triggers event, which is responded to by C. So even though this is microservices, I could use asynchronous event processing, which, wait a minute, doesn't that mean this is event-driven architecture? It's no wonder that question comes up. What really is the difference then between microservices and event-driven architecture? If we could replace event processors with microservices and the communication within microservices with events, Aren't these really just the same architecture style then? Well, it turns out that they're not. There's three distinct characteristics that do separate microservices from event-driven architecture. I want to describe each of those three. The very first difference between these two architectural styles is that of service granularity. You see, in event-driven architecture or event-driven processing, there's nothing in this architecture style that states anything about the granularity of an event processor. In other words, that could be a small single-purpose function, or that event processor could be a major subsystem of our environment. So my point being here that the granularity uh, doesn't really dictate that architectural style. However, in microservices, that's where microservices actually gets its name, micro, not from the physical size of a service, but rather what it does, single purpose functions. And so in microservices, what we strive for is kind of that close to extreme level of single responsibility principle to have fine-grained services. And that's the first difference that we see between these architecture styles. The second major difference is that of data granularity. Notice right here in these two architecture diagrams, I'm not even showing data in event-driven architecture. And there's a reason why because it can vary greatly. For example, I could have our entire event-driven architecture talking to a single monolithic database and schema. And so here the granularity of that data is monolithic. Any event processor can 
reach out and connect and talk to the same data. But in microservices, necessarily because of the fine-grained nature of the service, as well as the number of services consequently we have, we're typically required to break apart our data due to things, for example, like change control or scalability or fault tolerance or even connections to the database. However, let's move over to the event-driven architecture and notice we can change the topology. So in other words, I can create domain databases with my event-driven architecture so that I now start having separate schemas or separate databases or even go as far as to have every event processor own its own data, similar to what microservices does. The key point here is that data granularity is really constrained within microservices, but we have all three options available within event-driven architecture. There's no constraint about that. And as a matter of fact, that lack of constraint leads to the third biggest difference between event-driven architecture and microservices, and that is the bounded context. Now, the bounded context describes a service owning its data. It's actually how microservices works. And that allows change control to be facilitated throughout hundreds, potentially thousands of microservices. However, look on the left-hand side with event-driven architecture. There's no constraint or restriction to conform or form bounded contexts. Regardless of the data option that we choose, typically we don't focus much on bounded contexts within an event-driven architecture. Oh, we could, like that third option I showed you, which each uh, event processor owned its own data, we could form them, but it's not a constraint within that architecture style. We don't have to do that, but we do with microservices. And that is really that third piece. So if you look at these, clearly we can form hybrids to form an event-driven microservices architecture style where we either take event-driven architecture and create microservices with those event processors or take microservices and use event processing for some or all the portion of that. And so you can see these hybrids are very common, but individually, there are differences between these architecture styles. So this has been Lesson 131, Microservices versus Event-Driven Architecture. Although these differences are subtle, they are important differences for understanding the constraints in how each of these architecture styles work and what sort of characteristics they support. So thank you so much for listening. Stay tuned in two more Mondays for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday.